Good morning, 1P. Did everybody remember to pick up their journal on the way into class? Uh, if not, um, maybe the teacher um, watching my class can now pause the video while everybody makes sure that they have their journal because you're going to start today with this journal entry. Um, so let's take a look at this journal entry. This says that David walks to school each day along the solid black line path. So the solid black line path is this one here. So that's David's walk to school. How much distance does he save by cutting across the corner instead of going all the way around? Okay, so that's your mission. And I want to point out something that might help you out here, and that is the fact that this here, this length of path, we don't know how long that path is, but it is the hypotenuse of that right angle triangle. So hopefully something we were working on yesterday can help you out with that. So I'm just going to ask the teacher to pause the video for a couple of minutes uh, while you guys try and figure that out in your books. And then I'll be, when you're ready, um, we can roll the video again and I'll show you how to actually do the question. Okay, now that you're ready to do the question, uh, the first thing we need to do is figure out what this line is, uh, because we don't know what it is, but I gave you the hint before that it is the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. And when we're finding the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle, we know that it's C squared equals A squared plus B squared. In this case, our A and B are these dotted lines here. Those make up the arms of the right angle triangle. So that's 900 squared plus 400 squared. 900 squared is 81000, 81, oh, no, 810,000 plus 660,000. That gives us a grand total of 970,000. Uh, but that is C squared. So to figure out what that distance actually is, we got to figure out C, so we take the square root of 970,000, which is 985, approximately, meters in length. So that's 985 meters in length. Now I'm just going to take this, because we should have had that down in our process. So I'm going to copy and then we'll put that down here in our process, paste, and to get good communication marks, you could say, finding the corner length. Now, that distance there, that 985 is just the corner, so we need to find the total walk so I'm going to write down total walk equals 985. But there were two straight sections along there. So let's go back and look at that diagram. Um, we've got this little bit in here and this little bit in here. And I don't know what they are either. But I do know that this whole side is 1,100 meters. And then this little bit of it is 900 meters. So that means that I need to find this. I go 1,100 meters, subtract 900. will get me that little bit in there, which is 200 meters. And this bit up here, it's the whole side. And the whole side is the same as it is down here, 1,200 meters. So that's 1,200 meters subtract this bit off the end, 400, so that's 800 meters. So I have to add this little 200 meters and 800 meters, which of course is 1,000 meters. So I have to add on the 1,000 meters from the straight section, which means that this is 1,985 meters. 
Now that's actually not what we were asked. We were asked how much time he saves than if he were going all the way around. Well, if he were going all the way around, it would be 1,200 plus 1,100. So 1,200 plus 1,100 is the walk around. So we're going to say walk around equals 1,200 plus 1,100, which is 2,300 meters. So to figure out how much distance saved, we say distance saved equals 2,300 meters subtract 1,985 meters. And that is 315 meters. So since this is a word problem, we should answer in a word problem when we would say, therefore, he saves 315 meters. Now for the processing side of this one, where you write down your process, uh, we actually included most of it within our question. Uh, so I'm only going to add in here that this was using Pythagorean theorem and that will help us just put down our process so you know what we actually did there. Okay, so make sure that you get that copied down. You may, uh, the teacher in charge may need to pause the video so that you get a chance to do that. Okay, moving along to our new unit, or to, sorry, to our new lesson. Today's topic is area of composite shapes, and today's goal to find the area of a space that is made up of more than one kind of shape. So make sure you record that on your yellow gold goals page and you may need to pause the video to give them some time to uh, copy that. And now we're going to go on to the area of a composite figure. A composite figure is a big shape that is made up of a lot of little shapes. You first need to split the shape up into its smaller shapes and I'm just going to fix that little grammar error there. There shouldn't be an apostrophe there. You need to first split it, split it up into smaller shapes and find the area there. So let's have a look at this first one. Example number one says, find the area of the following shape. Well, that is a pretty complicated looking shape. But, and there's a light bulb over here. What's the bright idea? Uh, the idea is to split into three rectangles and find the area of each and then add them together. Uh, so I'm going to split it this way. I'm going to draw that line down there and that line down there. And I'm going to call this area one, area two, and area three so that we can refer to that. That's going to give us good communication skills on this one. So the first thing we have to do is take a look at this. Um, this shape, it's four meters by six meters. So that area is pretty easy to find. The area of a rectangle is length times width. So the area of one is um, six times four which is 24 square meters. The area of two is also a rectangle, which we find by length times width. And we've got a little bit of a problem here because I don't know what, what this is. I know that this length in here is 3.5, but this thing here, I don't have a number for. But if you take a look, we've got 3.8 there, and I know that this bit here is 2. So to get that little bit, I need to do 3.8 subtract 2, which equals 1.8. So for the rec second rectangle, the length is 3.5, and the width is 1.8. And 3.5 times 1.8 is... A 6.3. And again, it's going to be meters squared. Then we need to find the area of the third shape, which is also a rectangle, so we say length times width. The third shape, uh, we've got those numbers there. 
It's 3 and 3.8, so it's 3 times 3.8, which equals 11.4. And now we just have to add them all up. So total area, and I'm going to move this one up. Total, we add them all up. I want the area of 1 plus the area of 2 plus the area of 3. And that's going to give us 24 plus 6.3 plus 11.4, which totals 41.7 square meters. Okay, now here's another problem. In this problem, now we have a big shape. And then there's a gap in the middle of it. We've got this kind of square in the middle. And it's asking us to find the area of the shaded region. So here's our bright idea. It says, the idea, treat the area as one big rectangle that's missing a few pieces. Find the big area and subtract off the small. Um, so if I treat it as a huge rectangle, I can just fill this in. And then it's a big rectangle that's missing this piece this piece and this piece and I can just subtract them off so that looks like it, that sounds like a very doable thing so let's find the area of the big one and I'm gonna take away that shading there because I'm gonna call this one and these two pieces are exactly the same so I'm gonna call it two and two we just have two of those so the area of the big one is uh, it's a rectangle so let's go length times width and so it's 13 times uh, one whole side length so the one whole side length is 12 13 times 12 that gives us 156 and this is in meters so that's square meters so now I'm just gonna say area of one and it's a little rectangle. It's actually a square. It's 3 times 3, which is 9. And then the area of 2 equals length times width. And it's 3 times 3.5. And 3 times 3.5 is 10.5. And those are both in square meters, too. Now, if I want to find the area of the shade re shaded region, I have this great big rectangle, and I just have to take away these little pieces that are missing. So the shaded area, it equals the big one, area of the big, minus the area of one, minus two of the areas of two, area of two minus area of two. So the big is 156, subtract 9, subtract 10.5, subtract 10.5, and if you just plug that into your calculator, you get 126 square meters. And so that's the area of the shaded region. So now let's have a look. Do we have any other kind of shapes that we can work on here? Ooh, here's one. Find the area of the given shape. This looks like a triangle on top of a rectangle or beside a rectangle. So we've got two things here. We find the area of the triangle. Area of a triangle, if you remember, or if you look off your formula page, is the base times the height divided by two. And you have to remember what means, what the base and the height of a triangle are. The base and the height of a triangle meet each other at a 90 degree angle. So here, will be the height because it meets the base at a 90 degree angle. So this length along here is 8 meters and then this along here is 3.5. So that's our base and our height. So 3.5 times 8 divided by 2 and if you plug that into your calculator you get 14. And this is a meter still so it's square meters. So that's the area of the triangle. And we have the area of the rectangle, area of the rectangle. Area of a rectangle is length times width. 
So the length is 8 and the width is 1. So 8 times 1 is 8. And so if we want the total, we have to add them together. The total is the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle, which is going to be 14 plus 8, which is 22 square meters. Just remember you have that formula page to use and split this thing up into known shapes to figure out the area. And lastly, here's a little trick with this one. For part B, when you look at it, it looks pretty complicated. We've got circles and bites out of the thing and looks like a rectangle, but it's missing some stuff. However, if you take a really close look at it, if I cut off this section, it will fit into this section that's missing. And so if I cut off this section and fill in this section, this is just a rectangle. And we can figure out the area of a rectangle pretty easily. The area is going to be length times width, and that's going to be 90 centimeters. And you got to watch it here. It gave this in meters. You always have to have things in the same units. So 1.6 meters is 160 centimeters. So we do 90 times 160 is 14,400 square centimeters. Or if you had done it in meters instead of centimeters, we'll do that this time. Area is still length times width, except that it's 90 centimeters is 0.9 meters. So length times width would be 0 0.9 times 1.6 and 0.9 times 1.6 is 1.44 this time in square meters. Now those two are the same thing. Just notice that there's a lot more than 100 square centimeters in one square meter so you can't just convert afterwards. And there's your homework for today. Hopefully you can get that done. Page 13, number 3, number 4b, number five B and C, and number six. And if you don't get it done in class time, it is for homework, so make sure you get it finished. And that's it for your lesson. Get that homework done.